Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Right, this is Cool Dude Clem back in high definition because I thought I might just as well do high definition video again. Anyway, this is a headset that came packaged with a webcam. It's got the little ear clip thing that goes on here. Now I'm not going to wear this because these things are absolutely terribly uncomfortable and never stay in my ears. But what we're going to concentrate on today is the microphone and the terrible wire that comes with it. Now, as this is a capacitor type microphone, I can't just plug it directly into, say, this tape recorder and expect it to work. But anyway, you can see I've got it plugged into this little plug. And one end is going to a remote control, which I'm just using as a battery pack. And the other end is plugged into the tape recorder, because these little capacitor microphones need to be powered. And it's feeding the power to the microphone via this one kilohm resistor, which I'm blocking with my hand. Right, I don't know if you can make that out. Okay, so this is a schematic of the current setup, and I've tried to make everything resemble pretty much what it is. This is the little microphone here, and uh, bring the microphone in, you can see it looks pretty much like what it looks like on the thing. And this is the connector here. There's the cable that takes it to the tape recorder, and of course the batteries to power it. Now, I haven't drawn the cable around the microphone, I've only just put in the two wires, because it's not a shielded cable, so I didn't feel any need to do that, but... As you can also see, I've colour-coded the wires. Anything that's green is connected to the ground, and as the shielding of the um, shielded cable is connected to the ground, I've also drawn that in green. And that's this thing that's got all these diagonal lines through it. And you can also see the single wire going through it, and it's connected to the tape recorder. The problem is, when I make a recording, whenever I use this microphone, there is a terrible lot of background noise in it. Okay, you can sort of see me, it's very difficult to get myself and the tape recorder in a frame at the same time, so you'll just have to not see my head. There I am, see, there's me. I really need a haircut. Anyway, I'm going to use this microphone to make a recording onto the tape recorder, and I'm going to play it back into the computer, and you'll hear just how much background noise this microphone picks up. In fact, if I turn the amplifier up, you might be able to hear the amount of buzzing that's picking up from the, through the camera's microphone. Anyway, make a little recording on this now. Recording using this terrible excuse for, well, this microphone with a terrible excuse for a cable that's not even shielded. That's why it's picking up all this terrible buzzing. Now there is one way I could plug this thing directly into the tape recorder and use it. But instead of plugging the microphone into the tape recorder, if I plug the actual earphone part into the tape recorder, I can use that as a microphone. And I'm going to show you that right now. So here's the tape recorder, and here's the headset with the two plugs on the end. Now the green one is for the headphone part, so I'm going to plug that into the microphone socket on the tape recorder. Get the tape recorder ready for recording. Release the pause and speak into it, but I have to speak really close. Just turn the volume level up. Okay, the microphone level on the tape recorder is set up as far as it will go, and it is picking up, but not very good. That's why I have to speak right up close to it. Now I'm gonna take this paper cone that I made and stick it on the end there. And now it should be much more sensitive. Now when I'm speaking into the horn, you can see that it is picking up really well and overdriving, so turn the volume level down. Now I'm going to make another recording. So, just I'll just start this recording, and I'll speak into it. This is like one of those old Edison phonograph things. Hello, 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 Mary had a little lamb, it stunk, so she kept it outside. Okay, so, just talking at a normal volume level, meters fluctuating well. Let's hear how this came out. Okay, so that seemed to work pretty good. Anyway, I'm going to make another microphone like this using the speaker drivers out of these headphones. You stupid Philips, whatever they are. SHP2500. 
Yeah. If you ever seen Slimetron's um, F.U. Phillips video, you'll know what that's all about. I've had to fix these with a fork, believe it or not, because the whole thing just snapped off. If I could just remove the tape here. And just look at that cruddy build quality. Absolutely terrible. There's no use flimsy plastic and, as you can see, just bound to break sooner or later, it's inevitable. But what to do about the awful buzziness of this headset? Well, I'm going to try a different way of connecting the microphone up. Well, this is part of my solution. I have a couple of audio transformers. Now, I did want to use just one, but the problem is neither of these transformers have matching primary and secondary windings. The primary is about 600 ohms and the secondary is about one and a half, so I've put them both back to back, so... I've got about 600 ohms here, about one and a half here, and 600 here, so... It's like a 600 to 600 transformer. And I've just put a piece of audio cable, just a piece of ordinary two-core audio cable, connected it to the primary windings of this transformer here, and the other transformer is connected to the green wire to the input of the reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. Now, this means that I've got balanced input here and none balanced here, so if I touch either of these two wires, you should hear a buzz. So you can hear that, but if I touch them both together, the buzzing isn't as loud. Of course, if this was properly balanced, there wouldn't be any buzzing at all, but you know, you can't expect that from these transformers because they were never designed with that intent in mind. But anyway, on the other end of the wire, which is this, I'm going to connect the microphone and the battery and we'll see what we get. Okay, 10 minutes later on and here is the completed prototype. The two audio transformers are connected exactly as before. Except I've connected the batteries to the transformer, and I've also used balance cable to connect them. Again, there is the one kilo ohm resistor feeding the power to the microphone, which is now connected. On the other end of the other wire that was connected to the transformer, I've connected the connector, which is connecting to this. Now, when I speak into the microphone, get a little bit of feedback there, but I don't hear any kind of buzzing at all. And here it is in schematic form. Now I pay no attention to these bits here and other bits there, I'm just covering them up, so... Just to focus the attention on the thing we've got here. Now, you may be able to notice that uh, the two microphone wires are not connected to the ground this time. Instead, they're connected to this transformer here and these batteries. And this seems to work really good and doesn't pick up any hum. Now I'm going to make a recording on the tape. A very strange view of the tape recorder, so... It's going to start recording. Okay. The rec recording level is way too high. So I better just turn that down a little. Okay, now speaking into the microphone with the new, improved way of connecting it to the tape recorder. And I must say, there is no buzzing here. Absolutely no buzzing whatsoever. So I'm going to play this back and let you hear how it sounds. Another day, another modification. This time, the batteries are connected in series with the microphone that's connected and the transformers. And there's no resistor being used. Now, let's hear how this sounds. Okay, so I'm now recording with everything connected in series. That's the microphone the batteries and the transformer. Let's just pull up a little schematic diagram of how this is all wired up now. So now you can see how it's all wired up, but the thing is, this is picking up a little bit of buzzing. And I think that's because, well, since they didn't take the time and trouble to make this wire shielded, they sure as hell wouldn't have made the wire balanced. And I think that's the reason why it's picking up some hum here. So anyway, I'm going to prove that, um, the lights do interfere with this microphone because I'm going to turn the lights off. I've left the camera's light on and you can barely see me, but there you go. With the lights turned off, there is no sign of any humming. I'm going to turn the light back on again. That is if I can see the switch. There we go. Now the lights are back on and you can probably hear it buzzing again. Well, that didn't work as good as I expected. 
Now I've unplugged the microphone from the thing, as you can see. There is nothing connected there now. And I'm going to turn that microphone preamp up, and you won't be able to hear any buzzing whatsoever. You can probably just hear a hiss from the microphone's amplifier. That's with the transistors, I mean transformers. Nothing but the transformers and the batteries and the cable connected up. Connected up to the input of the tape recorder. Might be able to hear that. So it shows the cables I've used are not picking up any hum and neither are the transformers. And neither are the transformers. But anyway, the next thing I'm going to do is remove this connector from the end and solder on this little electric microphone and see what happens. Okay, well, I've now soldered the little microphone onto the end of this cable. As you can see, bit of a botch job there. Camera won't focus on it, of course. Still connected up to the batteries and the transformers. And this seems to work really well. I made a recording onto the tape, and I'm now going to play it to show you how well it works. Yes, well, this seems to work very well. And why am I happy with this thing? Well, listen. Can you hear anything? Exactly! It's silent, there is absolutely no buzzing whatsoever, and the lights are on. This is working better than I dared hope. Only downside though is that it doesn't seem to pick up the low frequencies very well. But, for recording speech really clearly, I guess that doesn't really matter. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to do some more experiments. Okay, so now, moving on to dynamic microphone experiments. I have a speaker which is out of that god-awful bush thing. And you can see it's connected to the transformer via this wire. And just like the capacitor microphones, it is not connected to the ground at all. And when I turn the level up, you can hear no buzzing whatsoever. Bit of feedback though. And when I tap it, yeah, you can tell that's working. Ah, oh. so transformer's just disconnected. Uh, I think that proves that it's going through the transformers. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Yep, that seems to be doing something. And here are the headphones I'm going to make a microphone out of. Yes, Slimetron, thank you, Phillips, indeed. Now, let's just take these things apart. To get to the drivers inside. There we go, there's the driver. Now, let's see if I can get this out. Okay, and there we go, I've got it out. Looks to be in pretty good shape. Just going to give it a test with the ohm meter and make sure it's still working. Okay, I'm just trying to show this all in the camera as well. Right, there we go. We have about 32 ohms, which is what I expect. Next thing to do, wire this thing up and see how well it works as a microphone. Well, as you can see, it is now wired up, soldered it on. As you can see, it's connected up exactly the same way as the microphone, except there's no batteries this time because it doesn't require power. It doesn't need to be powered, so there's no need to use a battery in the circuit. And again, just like before, it is not connected to the ground. Now, let's see how well this works as a microphone. Okay, is it working now? Just looking at the volume level on the VU meter and it's not really moving at all. Okay, I'll turn this up as far as it will go. Right, I'm talking into this headphone thing, this headphone transducer to see how good of a microphone it makes. And it doesn't really seem to pick up at all. So, I think it's time to apply a paper horn. So here is the horn. Let's see if this is any more sensitive. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Is it, is it even picking up anything? 
I'll turn the level back onto full. Well, it seems to be a little bit more stronger now. Although I really do look ridiculous with this thing held up to my face. So I think that just about sums it up. And if you didn't believe me, it's, yeah, you can see it right in there. And just before it's connected up to the two transformers, just about make that out. Anyway. I don't think I'll be using this thing. So that's just about it. So what I'm going to do now is take the best results and put that into a project box, but that's going to be for another video, because right now I don't have any project boxes to put it in. But anyway, that's probably what I'll be doing in a few videos time, so stay tuned and remember, if you like these videos, subscribe and tell your friends that there's this really awesome guy out there called Cool Dude Clem who does really good electronics videos and you might want to check them out. But anyway... That's it for now, so until next time, goodbye.